Hello my sweeties and welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know me, my name is Celise and thank you for joining my spooky little family. In today's video, we will be talking about Mario Bava's Black Sabbath. Let's get into the video. Unfortunately, in today's review, Cornelius will not be joining us. It's a sad day. It is a sad day for you guys, but it's a great day for me because I'm on spring break. So I'll see you guys in the next video, I think. I'll be back in a week. So bye, everybody. Bye. Soak up the sun. <laughs> Directed by Mario Bava, Black Sabbath is a horror anthology hosted by the king himself, Boris Karloff, and it follows a trio of horror stories concerning a stalked call girl, a vampire-like monster who preys on his family, and a nurse who is haunted by her ring's rightful owner. So before I get more into my thoughts on the film, I would like to shout out my patron Andy for recommending this film for me to review. If there is anything to know about Mario Bava, you know that he is going to absolutely slay when it comes to the production and the camera work. One of the most beautiful things about Bava's Black Sabbath is his very lovely shots, exquisite lighting, and very lavish sets, which I am a big fan of. I know this may be sort of controversial because a lot of people seem to really love this movie. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people sing high praises on Letterboxd for it. And that's all well and good, but you know, if you've been a part of the channel for a while, you know that even if a film is well loved, I'm still gonna say my honest thoughts on it, and uh, I fear that I did not really enjoy this as much as everybody else. But you know what, that's fine, because film and art is subjective. I am sure I'm still gonna get like the little guys in my comment section like crying and complaining that I just like didn't understand the film and yada yada yada. And you know what, if you're gonna be doing that in the comment section, Get on up out of here. This is just not the space for you. Right off the bat, Black Sabbath starts off quite strong for me with the telephone segment, which is actually known to be one of the earliest examples of a giallo, according to IMDb. So yeah, I did my research. It was also the first Italian thriller to be shot in color, and the more I get to see of Jolly and where it began, the happier I am. So you know what? I was all in. I really like this being our first story and I enjoyed the phone calls our lead was getting from the killer. It very much reminded me of Scream. And when you find out who it actually is, while it wasn't that surprising, it was like a little bit predictable, I still found it quite fun. One of my favorite things about this segment in particular has to be the set design. Everything is absolutely beautiful. I honestly just wanted to live in this woman's apartment. Her bed, amazing. Love that. I need that. It's honestly like a queen's bed. I love it. If I am being honest, I do think that they could have done a bit more with the story. Just be like a little more creative with it, given the fact that the rest of the segments in this movie are pretty creative. So this one was a lot more subdued than the others, but it's still enjoyable. So this is where this film kind of starts getting a little disjointed for me and we get little, as you say, lost in the sauce. The segment in the middle titled The Wardlock had to have been the one I struggled the most with, which genuinely made me sad because this is the one that Boris Karloff is in, and he indeed did serve and slay. Other than that though, this just like was not for me. Speaking of Boris Karloff absolutely slaying, I don't know if any of y'all knew this, but he actually almost never blinks in this segment. It's pretty amazing, pretty impressive, not gonna lie. And a little trivia moment for you, this is actually the only film in which he plays a vampire. So that right there is absolutely iconic. I did quite enjoy the practical effects in this segment, my fave specifically being the severed head, which 
Director Mario Bava's father, Eugenio Bava, actually created and sculpted the severed head for the Wardlock. So that's also pretty cool. Everybody in this family is so creative. Love that. Unfortunately, though, I just found this entire story and segment to be completely uninteresting and incredibly slow. I found myself really waiting for it to be over. There were multiple times where I was checking how much longer. So I feel like if that's happening to me, it's just like not a good sign. While it looks really cool, and of course Bava is a master at his craft, this type of storytelling specifically is just not for me. I personally feel like it's very of the time and I don't think it's something that is timeless. I just think it's something that is pretty boring. I also feel like I just wanted more of Boris and it is an absolute travesty we didn't get that. And actually, trivia moment, there were additional scenes filmed with Boris Karloff introducing the segments. However, AIP decided that they were like unnecessary and cut them from the film. Really stupid decision there. Karloff later mentioned that these introductions were actually some of the most fun he ever had on a film set. So honestly, that's more of an L on their part. I would have loved to have seen that. So enough about the Wardlock. It was absolutely boring. Didn't love that. Let's talk about the final segment called The Drop of Water, which was actually pretty enjoyable for me. I did feel like it was genuinely creepy and I really enjoyed the sculpted ghost head, which of course Eugenio Baba also created. Love that. And of course he did. I mean, it just looks so good. Everything about it was super creepy and I do think it still holds up to this day. It looks very, very good. While this segment is by far the best one here, I was kind of exhausted by the middle segment. So by the time we got to this one, I was just kind of like, oh, I definitely don't feel like it was a good idea to put this segment at the end. I don't know. like. If anything, I personally feel like the Wardlock segment, it just like didn't belong here. Like something about this was starting to feel very disjointed. Absolutely hated that for us. One of my favorite things about this segment, of course, is the way the camera moves with our actors. I really love that. It's very immersive. I love, again, the sets. And I do think that the acting was very, very good here. Um, our leading lady does an amazing job, love that. This segment also kind of reminded me a lot of the whole scene between Rachel and her sister Zelda in Pet Cemetery. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they were inspired by this segment for that because I feel like it was very, very similar. I also do think that if I had seen this segment specifically as a child, I probably would have been scarred by this woman because she is absolutely terrifying. I am really happy that I got to say I have seen it, but would I reach for this again? I don't think so. And that is really hard for me to say because I am a Mario Bava fan. So this is kind of sad, but you know what? This one just isn't for me. Perhaps I'll like Black Sunday better, which I'm definitely gonna check out after this. And with that, I am going to be giving Mario Bava's Black Sabbath two and a half levs out of five. This, sadly, is not for me. If you liked it, however, more power to you. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps me a lot. And be sure to click that little notification bell to be up to date every single time I upload. And let me know in the comments, have you seen Black Sabbath? Is it for you? Is it not really for you? Which is your favorite Mario Bava film? I'd love to talk about it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.